you didn't get excited over last weekend's marquee matchups in college football, you may want to check for a pulse. But don't worry, next weekend's headliners only get more exciting. I'm here with Alex Rosenbaum to take a look at the effect of these games on the big picture in the BCS. Now, Alex, let's start with last weekend with the big wins by Kansas State and Notre Dame. What do these mean in the big picture of the BCS? Well, obviously, this kind of sets the path for the rest of the way. These were kind of the biggest games for each of them. Kansas State and Notre Dame have a slight problem. They don't really have a marquee game left. The Big 12 mm -hmm. title game for Kansas State isn't going to mean much. And Notre Dame has USC left, but USC could have three, possibly, right. like, that could, Notre Dame could be their fourth loss of the season. That's not that impressive. Luckily, the polls are not going to put a one-loss team over any undefeated team. So all they have to do now is win out, and they really have a really good shot. Of course, the most interesting thing I took away, five, six, seven, eight, all SEC teams <laughs> I have no idea how it's going to work out and which teams are even going to go to the BCS. Yeah, the, the amount of talent in the SEC that is in the top of the rankings is insane this year. Now, let's look, look, look ahead to next weekend. Now, Oregon's finally got a real matchup against USC. Not a very timely loss for them last weekend, but what would this win mean to Oregon? Well, they'd finally get some respect, especially in the computer polls right now. They're like sixth. They keep averaging dropping. out in the computer polls, and they're second in both of like the people polls and the coaches and mm -hmm. um, uh, the Harris poll. Right. They finally need that marquee win to help them in the rankings to leapfrog maybe a Notre Dame or um, a Kansas State. Issue is they're going to blow this game out. Okay, I'm just going to run through some numbers. Oregon scores 53.4 points per game. They allow less points per game than USC allows. They haven't had a close <laughs> game all year. They haven't scored less than 40. They're unreal. To the point that they rush for 40 more yards a game than USC passes for. Oh my gosh. So this no. game isn't going to be close. They're going to get some respect, but again, they need to win out and they need to hope that maybe USC or Stanford is really strong. And I don't they, yeah. It's out of their hands. Beginning be of the year, this was one of the best matchups to look forward to. But like you said, Oregon is just looking insanely dominant this year. Now, last question here. Alabama, LSU, this weekend, rematch the BCS title game. Will... The tide roll. The, the tide will roll. The only thing LSU really has going in its favor is the fact that the game is at home for them. No one wants to go in and play LSU. But Alabama, first of all, both teams, elite defense. Alabama has the mm -hmm. best defense in the country. Here's the problem. Alabama's offense and LSU's defense is going to be a great battle, but LSU's offense is really one-dimensional. They have four running backs they work in there who can really run the ball well, mm -hmm. different speeds, sizes, different kinds of game, but they cannot pass the ball. And what that's going to allow, it's going to allow uh, Alabama to bring eight into the box, stop that running attack. And to be honest, uh, Zach Mettenberger, the LSU quarterback, he's going to make it easy for these uh, Alabama corners to really kind of take advantage and get good field position so maybe we can get a touchdown in this game. Absolutely. Alabama leading the league or second in the nation in turnover margin, so young quarterback Mettenberger might have a lot of turnovers in this game. We'll have to wait and find out. We have to take one more break, but coming up next, Team Trivia is back. I can't possibly lose to Team Kurt twice in a, well, twice in a row, right? Stay tuned to find out. 